Hi, I'm Kenzie Fell, producer and co-host of McGowan Braybender's podcast channel, Side Effects. In a world of flashy resumes, lengthy cover letters, and millions of LinkedIn profiles, MB's recruiting coordinator, Lauren Hem, knows how to navigate the choppy waters of staffing to bring McGowan Braybender the best and brightest employees. With stellar communication skills, organization, confidence, and HR knowledge, Lauren believes in the power of human capital. Following Steve Jobs' advice, it doesn't make sense to hire smart people and tell them what to do. You need to hire smart people so they can tell you what to do. Without further delay, let's welcome Lauren to the show. I'm Scott McGowan. I'm Kenzie Fell. And I'm Anne Marie Singleton. Now, I think even for our listeners, too, I think what's important is um, we might be right, we might be wrong, but one thing is we're not afraid. Our goal is to get you to think about things a little differently. And we're unscripted. We just have free reign for 20 minutes. Welcome to Side Effects with an A. Welcome to Side Effects. Hello. How are you, Anne-Marie? Hi. Great. How are you, Kenzie? Wonderful. Awesome. And we have a great guest here today, Lauren Hem, our recruiting coordinator. Hello, everyone. Hi, Lauren. Hi. We're so excited to have you here today. Yes, very excited. Yeah, thanks for joining us. So we're going to talk about human capital today, where you spend your days and nights trying to help us recruit excellent talent at McGo and Braybender. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, so Lauren, let's just jump right in. Tell us a little bit about your background and how did you land this position at McGowan Braybender? Okay, so my background is I was a um, preschool teacher prior to my role here at McGowan, very part-time. Um, and how I landed this position is probably my number one tip to all employees out there or candidates, people actively looking for jobs, was networking. Mm. So I actually saw Anne Marie and our other business development representative, uh, Sarah Skeena, at a TEDx event and just happened to work prior uh, to MB with Sarah Skeena and um, struck up a conversation and let her know that I was looking for a job and long story short and four interviews later I received my position at McGowan. Yeah, wow. I remember meeting you that day we were upstairs and on a break at TEDx and Sarah introduced me to you in the hallway and I said who is that I really like her can we <laughs> hire her yeah um, I you know I didn't know you but yes. you made such an impression and well, Sarah's like you. hey I don't funny know, enough I didn't know idea. this story funny enough she's that. looking for a job but if I had never said anything or even went to the TEDx event which primarily a lot of employers are you know going mm -hmm. um, I definitely would not have been here at wow. this point yeah. which is one of the best things that's ever happened to me so so we're very, we're very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, your prior experience is um, working in a preschool. Yes. Um, takes a lot of patience. Anyone who's ever been around little ones and toddlers. <laughs> and I think that skill set probably is required for your current role as well. So tell us, what makes a great recruiter? So I would say, along with my preschool experience, being patient but also driven, um, makes for a great recruiter. You need to have great communication skills. Um, and you also need to be approachable. Um, you definitely need to know your industry. I think one of the best things that um, helps me as a recruiter here is that when I came into McGowan, I worked on the client side. So not only do I know the company in general, but I know a lot about different teams that are involved within um, our company. You know our so business. And I you know do what know we our do. business. Huge. And I know it from our side as I'm going, and then I also know it from visiting the clients and the interaction that we have with them. So that has really helped me in my role here as a recruiter. Yeah, and I'm not sure what other companies do. Um, I'm sure that it's across the board, but I think sometimes people feel like they have to hire in category. They have to have a recruiter come in and fill a recruiting position um, versus looking for the skill set that makes someone successful in a role. So mm -hmm. what's your opinion on that? So um, for McGowan, we definitely hire for people, for the culture. We feel like the industry is so complicated and always changing. So having a general idea is great, but what we really look for is the people, mm -hmm. um, their values, their, um, you know, work ethic, how they work in teams, um, you know, just 
anything that we can do to find out who they are as a person because we feel like we can teach them our industry, mm -hmm. um, how we at McGowan handle things as well because uh, brokers in general handle – you know, their clients differently all across the map. So we really can teach all that. We mm -hmm. just want to make sure that we're bringing in the right people. Right. And so, as you said, your interview process was four interviews. That feels pretty lengthy. Mm -hmm. What What do you think the purpose of each one is and why is it important to have multiple rounds, I guess? So it's important because we do work so much in teams here at McGowan. So it's not just the client side, but then you have our financial analytics division that works so closely with our account management team and works so closely with our consultants. And in fact, sometimes if we're having a prospect, we bring them in on that meeting to even try to gain our clients. So it's important um, that we have everyone who is going to touch base with that employee or the with candidate. Them. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. To so interview. So, so the multiple interviews include different team members inside of McGowan and Brave Absolutely. Vendor. Okay. And then dependent upon the role, they can include leadership. You mm -hmm. know, if we have a consultant that's very um, the face of the company and is out there representing us, it's very important to have shareholders and leadership involved um, in that decision. Um, you know, uh, financial analytics we definitely have an account management team that would be working closely we typically will bring one of them in for an interview mm -hmm. um, process so I love that I think it's so important you get to meet the CEO and the HR director and when I was hired here I I had my pre-screen with you on the phone mm -hmm. I met with my two direct managers and then I got to meet with Scott and Suzanne our HR director and our mm -hmm. CEO mm -hmm. and I was like this is cool like I get to meet them and they want to get to know me um, before any final decision is made, which mm -hmm. is pretty common, I think. But it just made me feel, like, extra special, too. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a little more uncommon than it is common mm -hmm. of the amount of interviews that we do. Um, one of the major feedback points that we hear from candidates is that our experience takes so long. Mm -hmm. yes. But that is important to us because we do need to have everyone involved. Um and I also think someone in your role, Kenzie, when you had Scott McGowan uh, interview you, that's not very common mm -hmm. to take it to that that level. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but for us, our brand and our culture is so important, and you would be representing us, so it is it is a step that we're willing to take. Right. Um, and Scott's willing to yeah. take, which and is and we've gotten that feedback multiple times from mm -hmm. candidates that have joined us and mm -hmm. those that haven't is gosh, the process takes a really long time. I didn't understand what was taking so long. And mm -hmm. even though we set it up up front for them to let them know, mm -hmm. this is a lengthy process. It's a little more, you know, more involved than perhaps other things you've done in the past. Um, when we hire specifically for consultants, there's some project work involved. Mm -hmm. And we want to be sure it's a really, a really good fit. And even though we've gotten that feedback, which I guess you could call it constructive, we've opted not to change that process because in the end, those that do join after they're here say, that was the best thing I could have ever experienced because I now I understand, you know, you what really get to know what you're getting yourself mm -hmm. into. Right. Yeah. And that's for external candidates as well as internal. So when mm -hmm. I came into McGowan, I was working on the client side and then the recruiting position came open. Mm -hmm. And so one, you have to ask, is it okay if I even apply mm -hmm. and are you eligible for that? And then I had three internal interviews to get my role as a recruiter wow so, and you're already um, you already they hired you already because they liked exactly. you exactly and then you can and then they're gonna vet role. you even more when you're trying to make an internal switch which i appreciate mm -hmm. i want it to be a great fit for not only yourself but then the company as well right yeah. mm -hmm. so we've got these four interviews um give or take we've got all of these multiple people from different disciplines in the company, some folks who are used to interviewing people and are mm -hmm. very good at that, others who may not be used to interviewing candidates but are important to be in that process. Mm -hmm. um, wh what types of questions are best to ask an applicant? How do, we, how do you go about making sure that those that are doing the interview are prepared? So we have a couple things that we do. Um, typically, uh, we will have interview training on a yearly basis. So anybody that's been involved in an interview um, will have gone through interview training. If for some reason we have uh, someone that's going to interview and has not gone through that training yet, we will set up a meeting with, um, with that employee in HR. Um, 
and make sure that they know the highlights, what to do, what not to do. And then as well as our process. So we um, go through a behavioral based interview process. So every single role here at McGowan, we have looked at in um, developed or came up with certain competencies uh, for that role. Mm -hmm. um, and then we ask behavioral based questions based on those competencies. And not only do we go in depth for one interview, we do that for, you know, majority of our roles take three interviews. So we have gone through and have done that for three different interview, you know, guides. Um, the behavioral based questions that we're asking are looking for um, their behaviors within a role. So for example, if we're looking for teamwork, we're going to ask, okay, let us know a, a time when you've been involved with a team. Mm -hmm. What was your role on that? And what was the outcome? What were some of the challenges? And then the, that's open ended questions that it will allow a conversation right. to get to know um, them better definitely to get to know yeah. them better mm -hmm. and specifically to get their behaviors within a role mm -hmm. um, and I really appreciate the interview guide um, I've been interviewing people for 25 plus years mm -hmm. um, but I appreciate the guide uh, particularly because there are others in the process so we may have six or seven or eight people by the time we're done and everyone had a different experience, even if you're in the same meeting with that particular candidate. And yep. so in order to be fair to both the candidate and also the company, um, it's really impactful and valuable when we can say, we asked this specific question, here's what we saw when the person answered, or here's the responses that we heard, versus attending the interview and making questions up on the fly. Sometimes you're really on your game, sometimes you're not. And this way we're all following the same process. Yes, it definitely keeps it consistent um, and across the board. Yeah, because mm -hmm. our process can take so long. So it could be two weeks between interviews from one candidate to another. So it definitely keeps it consistent. You can go back. We do a debrief on all interviews. So it's mm -hmm. great to go back and look over your notes. And they are the same questions that you would have asked another candidate. Yeah. So Lauren, you and I work very closely on posting and updated jobs on our website, um, keeping things updated. W and we hire for multiple positions, you know, consultants, um, business development reps, FAS analysts, service reps, a little bit of everything. So what exactly do you have a punch list or how do you work through each posting that you're creating and what do you kind of do, I guess, step by step to get prepared for that listing? So if that makes sense, it, it <laughs> does make sense, but there's a lot involved. So recruiting, we, we work closely with leadership on what's coming up, what our budget will be, forecasting mm -hmm. open roles, as well as, okay, we just had somebody have a life change and we're needing to immediately fill a role. Right. So we're working in a lot of different buckets um, and constantly keeping active on the search. Um, when I'm going through the process, if I know that I have a forecasted 20, 2020 um, job. Mm -hmm. I'm working what resumes are coming in. I have a pipeline um, of resumes, people that I've, you know, talked with that maybe it just wasn't the right fit for that team. Mm -hmm. But I definitely think, oh, I keep think them they in would mind. absolutely yep. keep them in mind, um, as well as an immediate role that would come open. So if an immediate role comes open, we get together with the team, we talk about what they're looking for, what didn't work, why the person's leaving, mm -hmm. or what they want in a future candidate. Mm -hmm. um, that's very important um, to do the pre-work and then during the interview, and then we debrief. So that input is so important too. Absolutely, it's very important because you know, although we have financial analysts and it's one big division, they all work under team leads. And so mm -hmm. they all work a little bit different. And then they all also all work in different segments. Right. So, you know, what might fly for someone working in a large segment might not be might uh, not be the same skill the set. The same yeah. skill set needed for a small segment. Right. Um, so you mentioned you have a pipeline all the time and you know, yep. being in sales, that's I love that word pipeline. Right. So <laughs> uh, talk to me, like how many candidates do you have? Because I know how many people you have to phone screen to get a candidate right. to, to my desk. So how many do you have in the pipeline at any one time? So any one time I'm usually looking at twenty five pretty hot candidates. So 
Um, that includes interns. Mm -hmm. Interns can be included in my pipeline because we have a really extensive internship process here. Right. Um, I'm always looking. A lot of times they're juniors. We're looking at, okay, what are you, you know, do you like the division you're working in? What are, what are your plans? Are you wanting to go to Columbus? So mm -hmm. if I know in 2020 we're going to have a role open in Columbus, I am definitely already looking at that person that we're vesting and onboarding, have vested a lot of time in, and feel like they would be a great fit, I'm going to start working that as well as I've talked to, you know, recent grads or somebody that I um, had received a resume, like I'd said before, and they just weren't the right fit for the team. So I keep them in my pipeline. I'm mm -hmm. really good about reaching back out. Um, a lot of people appreciate that. They might already have had a role at that time, but I'm like, hey, I just put the bug in your ear. We are going to be looking in, mm -hmm, you know, right. four or five months. So if anything doesn't work out, um, let me know. Yeah, and I think we changed the process a few years back on the interns, uh, mm -hmm. uh, as far as I can remember, and making sure that we were really looking for people who wanted to continue on in, in this particular business. Absolutely. And sometimes we get interns that decide this isn't for them, but how many of our interns do we hire? About 50%. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it's very good, and I think one of the the things that we really look at is also, you know, we're not just going to pick a music major to come in and work in financial analytics, mm -hmm. which is pretty uh, behind the desk, knowing Excel, um, very detail oriented. Mm -hmm. So we really are looking at now specific majors um, and, you know, their interns are doing real, real work yes. in dealing with clients. They are very helpful to our employees. I'm really impressed with the interns that we've had in the past and the current interns that we have. They are doing real work, and I'm, I'm very, very impressed. And, you know, we had an intern a few years ago who was an accounting major, came in and did one summer internship in the accounting department and was like, you know, kind of interested in what you guys are doing over there in sales. And so came back the next summer and interned as our sales intern, which mm -hmm. I usually have one or two and um, joined us full time in yes. sales when he graduated. Which is great. And it was great that he came in as a financial analyst because that gave him the number side to mm -hmm. when he goes out to bid jobs and or prospect. It's it, that depth of knowledge is great for the business and a well-rounded employee and ready, f ready to work here. Right. I'm and going. that he had the courage to kind of speak up and be like, hey, I want to try something else. I feel like interns especially are may not feel like they can do that but right. that he felt comfortable enough to be like you know what I want to explore other yeah. things here and I think that's part of the process we're talking about hiring and interviewing right now but you know our HRD our HR department does so much more than that and mm -hmm. so you have a specific platform for them when they come in they understand who they you know wh what they can do they get to meet everyone in leadership so they they have the same opportunities that mm -hmm. um, employees have and that's that open door open dialogue policy which is really um, again, I think that's part of the entire process from the multiple interviews to letting people meet everyone on our leadership team and immersing them in our culture completely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's a good investment for the company. We spend a lot of money on onboarding. And so if you can't make that fruitful in the end for at least 50 percent, which is a great number to have, um, you might need to look at your onboarding experience, whether mm -hmm. it's internships or onboarding in general. Yeah. So when you're also go kind of thinking about interns, what do you look more at, school or experience? When you want somebody, I mean, I guess it could just be interns or regular employees. Mm -hmm. Which one do you focus more so on? So this is a tough, tough question. So obviously for entry level, either interns or employees, um, more of an entry level role, it's more of We'll look at schooling. So you got a 4.0 GPA. Does that matter? <laughs> yeah, tell me we about that. Yes, I've got, I've got right. Kids that children, are be seniors in high absolutely. school. Absolutely. Tell me about it the does, GPA. I mean, we look at it. It's on the resume, and we do look at it. Mm -hmm. um, schooling itself isn't as critical as um, the experience. I would oh, yeah. say, um, account manager wise, we're not going to hire an entry level person. They definitely need to be experienced. They need to have customer, you know, relation skills, client management skills and people skills in general, manage mm -hmm. management skills in general. So um, it's just very dependent upon the role. Um, schooling is a great way not only to obtain the knowledge, but also um, if you're a sales consultant, alumni associations, it's a oh great yeah. way to get you yeah. in the door. Um, at a lot of events, get networking. your name out there. Absolutely networking. Mm -hmm. And it's good 
skills. You know, you're going to a college that um, you're putting yourself out there. You're making it to work or, or to classes on time. Mm-hmm. You're, right. you know, joining experience. groups. It's absolutely a life experience and it's follows you for a long time. But there are certain roles here at McGowan that it's not necessarily about the schooling. Right. So you've got all of these uh, resumes in your pipeline. You've got all of these candidates you're talking to. You have these positions you're hiring for from really what I'll call senior level level positions to entry level positions. What's the number one mistake in hiring? I mean, for, for us or just in general? Okay, so I would say this will be a theme that you, going back from what we spoke about at the very beginning, was the number one mistake I think in hiring in general specifically here at McGowan is rushing the process. Mm-hmm. Um, if we are not taking our time and vetting the candidate so it's a great fit for ourselves and a great fit for them, um, it is not going to be a long-term hire. And here at McGowan, we really want to hire. We, we spend so much on our onboarding process. We, we are looking for the candidate that is wanting to have a career, not a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. Um, We want a career because we promote, um, you know, internal promotions. Oh yeah. It's, it's a thing here at McGowan. We, we recognize the value of that. Um, So rushing through that process, you know, really trying to sell ourselves on the candidate isn't always the best thing. We want it to be a good 50, 50 ratio. We want them to want this, want this, position right um, and we can and remember work a time here. when we did it I mean we all have done it we've all been excited for one reason or another or there was some shortened timeline that you know was outside of of everyone's control and we've rushed the process and um, anytime you rush anything you run the risk of making a mistake or missing mm-hmm. something and so um, that's a really good really good tip um, so you mentioned earlier i'm going to switch to pre-screens yes <laughs> yes um we don't know what it's like to be in your world mm-hmm. um, we only get to see the candidates that have made it through your pre-screen and your mm-hmm. phone screen and mm-hmm. by the time they get to us even though sometimes we still pass you've done a lot of work right this is like we the tip of the iceberg so yep. tell us what goes on behind the door like what's one of the funniest pre-screen stories uh no names please right that you've <laughs> ever had so i don't know that i necessarily have a funny But I have one that's very um, impactful and just happened last week. So I like to ask a lot of different questions when I'm doing my phone interview. It's my first touch with with the candidate. Uh, One of my favorite questions is, you know, tell me about a useful criticism that you've ever received and what did you capitalize? You know, how did you... overcome that or Mm -hmm. how'd you take that yeah I remember Um, that question yeah that you asked me criticism (laughs) or um I also you know love short-term goals which leads me to my story so last week I I asked someone um you know tell me about your short-term goals and where you see yourself in the next five years which is also very telling to know if I if I'm looking for looking at a candidate that's really kind of a stepping stone candidate or someone who wants to find a place a home and just build a career right Mm -hmm. Um, in this this particular candidate um, gave me a short-term goal that was very touching and real and raw at the moment Um, if anybody is lived in Dayton or near this area Um, knows that we recently had tornadoes Mm -hmm. and she said I'm actually looking at rebuilding my life not only for you know my career wise but also for my family she said we were involved we live in Beaver Creek and we were involved in a tornado it went right through my living room and I have four children and my oldest was thrown 30 feet into the neighbor's uh, yard wow Um, all safe but their house was completely leveled with them in it. Wow. Um, so they currently are in a townhome, which she was very thankful for to have the townhome. Um, and they are just going through the process of all the paperwork and clearing out wow. all the yard debris, mm-hmm. then trying to figure out can we build back on the land that we have. Mm-hmm. And just going through all of that. Um And more importantly, it was impactful because of the way she handled the story and the way that she handled it with grace and um, 
Wow. Still yet very excited to get this job here at MB and work her way toward that because she's a lot going on. And that would probably be the last thing I would be doing is accepting a phone call in an interview in a (laughs) townhome as I just had, you know, my whole house leveled. I have four children that have been through a really traumatic experience. So it's it's things like that that I hear um, that really tell me about the person Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. what I'm looking for in McGowan because you know again as we talked about at the very beginning we can hire all we want for the skill set but if they don't fit the culture then they probably aren't going to be a long-term fit and Mm -hmm. we'd rather have a long-term fit and teach them um all the skill set they need right right because we don't have machines here at McGowan Braybender um even though we have our wonderful podcast studio we have human capital and our people are our assets and we need them to interact with the workforce that's at, at our employers the same way um, that we, we would interact with each other here at, at MB. And mm-hmm. so um, that's a really cool story. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, yeah. it's and not a funny one. It's a yeah, little bit okay. of a... I know, that's... It's not tell. funny, We're but it's very impactful. <laughs> but those are things that you, that you know... Remember. Yes, exactly. Absolutely, they're telling. So um, switching gears a tad, as the multimedia specialist mm-hmm. with all of our social media that we do, um, what do you... Wha- how does this play a role in the hiring process and do you give any suggestions or does that make you maybe not choose somebody because you've seen their social media Mm -hmm. so what I have to say about any publicly shared platform is that you should always be cognizant of what is being posted on your public platform yep um, social media especially Mm -hmm. um because anyone can look at your social media. It's a representative representative of you. You're always selling yourself mm-hmm. um, to whether that's employer, that's a school you want to get into. That's, you know, it is a public platform. So right. anyone can look at it. Um, so treat it as such. Um, but I will turn the gears back to you, Kenzie, mm-hmm. because you are our social media uh, representative and for us it's hugely important because that is how someone is going to search and know our brand our culture and ultimately decide if they want to work for us or not that's exactly. the that you know applications are done over the phone now nowadays everything's done over the phone electronically oh, yeah. so mm-hmm. we need to be um, on point with making sure that someone can look at our website and within 15 seconds know everything about what we're about yep. and decide if they want to work with us, don't want to work with us, know, know basically what they're getting into Oh yeah. Um, and I in a matter of a click. I <laughs> think, too, as I present and be online, I mean, we're obviously a very positive culture, but I love to highlight the things that got my attention when I was applying here. I was like, oh. They do volunteer events or, oh, they had a fun ice cream day or, you know, the little things like that is what makes a huge difference. And Absolutely. So I know whenever I look at uh, like our employee social media, I'm, I'm excited to see that they are representing themselves in the best way and sharing what MB's values are as well. So Absolutely. It's a great way to get to know, know a company. Mm-hmm. And I think the other um, going to that, our social media site or our career site, um, one of the best changes that we've ever done is interview employees on a specific role. So not only can I look at my phone, know what positions are open on, at MB, but then I also can, in a matter of a click, look at um, an employee that's actually working in that position. Yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah. Right. And so you know right away whether right. or not that'd be a great fit for you or not. Well, and mm-hmm. you mentioned earlier, you know, having Mago and Brave Ender social media tell our story and who we are and how phone screens and interviews are done on the phone or electronically. Um, How do we make sure that what people put on their resume is factual? I mean, I saw a statistic in Higher Right that 85% of candidates lie, I'm Mm -hmm. using quotes for people who can't (laughs) see me, quote unquote, on their resume. That could be a tiny little, oh, I did this, I had this accolade, to something really major. Mm -hmm. How How do you sift through that? So... I think you can tell when things are embellished um, and also going back to our long vetting process of interviewing, um, we eventually find those things out Mm -hmm. as we are going through the interview process. Um, So I think that's number one is 
really taking your time with a candidate. If you have a question about something, you're going to probe during the interview process and really figure out what's going on. We also um, do reference checks. I think that that's something that's gone by the wayside that mm-hmm. we still continue to do. Right. Um, so we do reference checks. And then also when I see something uh, on a resume, you know, we have a lot of, I, a lot of people will, will put um, that they have went, went to college, but they won't necessarily, they almost make it look like they have a degree, but maybe they don't. They didn't put their end date. They Ooh. didn't put their end date. Yeah. It's, I've it's one that. of the, one of the things Sneaky. that happens quite frequently, yeah. um, so just that verifying. I also, yeah, verify. Mm-hmm. And then I say, just so you know, in the future, um, maybe edit that. that yeah, <laughs> edit there. that because yeah. I would want that. You know, oh, and yeah. I think there are people out there that just aren't aware. Right. They don't um, know. They. I don't think anyone's being malicious. I think they just don't not. know. Well, I so agree. And definitely, I, I'm very open and honest with them. And I want that advice. Yeah. So we're pretty honest yeah. with that. Well, we hope mm-hmm. that this provided some information for our listeners today. I know we spend a lot of time on benefits topics. Today, we spent some time on an HR mm-hmm. topic yeah. that is very important for most employers today in this economy of trying to hire the right people and trying to drive talent inside of organizations. And we really appreciate your insights mm-hmm. in coming here today. If you have any ideas for future podcasts, you can email us at ann at healthierbirthdays.com. Or Kenzie at healthierbirthdays.com. And if Lauren didn't scare you away with all of her <laughs> checking and vetting, it, we wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't say, if you think MB is a fit for you and you want to learn more about that, you can submit a resume online. Mm-hmm. You can talk to Lauren. She's going to check your references. And I'm thankful that you weren't the recruiter when I was hired here. <laughs> um, but no, you do a great job for us and we really appreciate it. Thank mm-hmm. you so much. Thank, thank you for joining us, Lauren. Yeah, thank you. And we'll great. see you guys all next time on Side Effects.